All right, I want to talk about the causes of the Hundred Years' War. Now, the Hundred Years' War, of course, was a, was a long conflict between the kingdoms of England and France um, from the 1330s to the 1450s. Um, and there were a number of issues between the two kingdoms. There were things like piracy. Uh, there were things like you know, trade issues with Flanders and the Netherlands. But the real heart of the issue was the dynastic conflict. There was a, it was a dispute about who is the king of France. And it worked this way. Uh, let's, let's go back up a little bit. We have Philip III, Philip the Bold. And, and you don't get to pick your nicknames in medieval Europe. So they're just signed to you. So he's Philip the Bold. Uh, he rules from 1270 to 1285. He has four sons. He has Louis, Philippe, Robert, and Charles. Now, Louis and Robert die young. And so when Philip dies in 1285, he only has two sons left. The oldest is Philip, called the Fair, Philippe the Fair. Um, and, and Philip, because uh, he was good looking, and again, you don't get to pick your nicknames, they get assigned to you. So Philip would rule as king from 1285 to 1314. He has four children. He has Louis, Philippe, Charles, and Isabel. Okay, and so when Philip dies, Philip the Fair dies in, in 1314, his oldest son, Louis the Quarrelsome, that's the name they assigned him, uh, Louis becomes Louis X. Um, you have Philip V, Philip the Tall, who rules after him. So Louis X rules from 1314 to 1316. Uh, Philip V rules from 1316 to 1322. And then they're, they're the third son, Charles IV, known as Charles the Bald, because you don't get to pick their nicknames, um, he rules from 1322 to 1328. It's when Charles dies in 1328 that the issue really come, becomes the problem. And that is that Normally, when a king dies, you would go to the next closest male relative, and that means that you would go to a, the oldest son of the previous king first. If there is no oldest son, you would go to the younger brother of the previous king. If there is no younger brother, you would go to a nephew, well, you would go to an uncle, if there's still an uncle alive, um, or you would go to a nephew, and then finally you'd go to a cousin, okay? Well, when Charles dies, he has no sons, so that one's off the table. In addition, he has no younger brothers. The only sibling he has left is Isabella. So that's not going to happen because under French law, a woman cannot become the, the, the ruler of France. And so then it, goes to, it would go to a nephew. Well, Charles does have a nephew because his sister Isabella had married Edward II, the King of England. Now I should point out that there's the two older brothers, Louis and uh, the Quarrelsome and Philip the Tall. They did not leave any male heirs. So, but Isabella had married Edward II of England. And incidentally, Edward II of England is also the Duke of Aquitaine, which is a, he's, a, he's the Duke of a territory in southern France, and that'll become important later. But Isabella and Edward, Isabella and Edward had had a son who was Edward III of England at the time of Charles IV's death in France. So Edward III of England could claim I'm the next closest male heir because I'm the nephew of the previous king. However, under French law, traditionally, you don't get to inherit the crown through a woman. It has to be a direct male succession, so none of Isabella's children should be in line for the throne of France. Now, Edward could have tried to push the issue, but there were a whole bunch of reasons that Edward was in no position to push the issue at that point. And let me just list a couple of them. First of all, Edward II, the King of England, had been a wildly unpopular king for a lot of his reign. He was a big, athletic, handsome guy, um, but he had this habit of finding one male friend and just lavishing all sorts of honors and, and power, etc., on him and influence on him, and it drove the other aristocrats in England nuts, and they hated it. Um, and so Edward had faced potential rebellions for a lot of his reign, and what had happened is in 1820, or 18, 1325, um, Edward had actually had his territory as the, um, the, as the Duke of Aquitaine seized by Charles the Bald. And I'll, I, I'll go into that more in a little bit, but as part of the negotiations, Isabella had gone to France to negotiate to get Edward his duchy back, but in the process, she had had an affair with a guy named Roger Mortimer, and they had put together an army, and they had come back and invaded England 
So the king had to face an invasion from his wife and her lover, and they had overthrown Edward and locked him up. They had had Parliament depose him, and then they had declared Edward, their son Edward as Edward III, King of, France, of England. And so Edward was the King of England, although Edward at the time was like 17 years old, and Isabella was named as the regent. Now, you can see by this point how Isabella got her nickname. She was known as the She-Wolf of France. Um, so Isabella was really ruling England at this point, and she was not, and she was not super popular, and she was worried about facing rebellions from supporters of Edward, uh, who's still alive. But, um, but, so she's in no position to push uh, Edward becoming, uh, claiming to be the king of France. So Edward basically just says in 1327, I'm the king of England. Now, that, if that's the case then, you would then go, are there any uncles left? Well, the last uncle, to, you know, uncle of Charles the Bald, and the uncles left, Charles, his uncle had died in 1325, so he, was, he had died before Charles the Bald, so there's no uncles. But Charles had had a son, Philip, Philip the Fortunate. Um, so in 1328, the French basically say, Charles has no sons, uh, he has no younger brothers, he has no nephews that qualify because Edward would inherit through a woman, he has no uncles, and therefore his cousin, Philip V, Philip the Fortunate, would become Philip V of France. Now, at this point, another interesting thing had happened, and that is that there was still the issue of Gascony, right? That Isabel had, uh, that Charles the Bald had seized Gascony from Edward II, and Isabel had gone and negotiated, and one part of the negotiation was she agreed that Edward III would go and do homage to Philip, okay? Well, uh, to, to uh, Charles. Um, and what this meant was that when you're, a, a, when you're a, a noble who is a vassal of a king, the king has given you a piece of territory like Aquitaine or Gascony, you have to go and do homage. You have to basically recognize that king as your lord, and you have to swear allegiance to that king, and, and you become the king's vassal. Well, Edward II should have been doing that way back here. He should have been the vassal of Louis X and Philip V and Charles IV. He had refused to do it. He was the king of England. He had a bunch of stuff going on in England. He didn't want to go over to France and kneel in front of the king of France, so he refused to do it. And that's what actually brought things to a head in 1325, was that Charles had seized Gascony in part because Edward refused to do homage. So part of that negotiation was Isabella had had, had her son, Edward, who was a teenager, go and do homage to, to Charles. And then when Philip becomes king, Isabella has Edward go and do homage to Philip. But he does what's called simple homage, and in 13, and, and so, so basically Edward has recognized Philip as the king of France and has renounced his, his um, claim to that, but in 1330, Edward would finally oust his own mother. He would take control of the government himself. He, she would not be regent anymore. He would rule in his own name, um, and Edward now is really running the country, and so he's really in a position to say, maybe I want to push my claim to be king of France. Well, in 13, it sort of sits there. Edward's busy solidifying his control of England. But in 1337, it comes to head again because Philip says, you know what? Edward did homage to me, but it was the wrong kind of homage. He did simple homage. He should have done a more elaborate ceremony that recognized me as his liege lord. And, and Edward's like, no, uh uh. And Philip says, you've got to come do homage again. And Edward says, no. And that's the conflict in 1337 which finally pushes Edward to just say, you know what, screw it, I'm going to say I'm the king of France. He says, I'm going to claim through my mother that I'm the king of France and that you, Philip, are not the king of France. And that's what starts the Hundred Years' War. And Edward would invade France and there would be battles, and I'm, I'll talk about that in another lecture sometime. But I just want to point out a, a, that, that that's not quite the end of the dynastic story here. Because essentially now you've got Edward claiming to be the king of uh, England and France, and you've got Philip, who's claimed to be the king of France, and they're fighting, basically, over who's going to be the king of France. Well, they don't resolve it during their reigns. Edward would live until 1377, 50 years, in fact. Um, and when he dies, his, he's succeeded by his grandson, Richard II. His son had died before him. So Richard II becomes the king of England. Richard II has no son, so when he dies, his cousin, Henry IV, becomes king of England. And then Henry IV has a son, Henry V, who becomes king of England, and then Henry VI. So on the English side, it goes Edward, Richard, Henry, Henry, Henry. On the French side, Philip V 
has a son, so when he dies, he's succeeded by Jean the Good, um, who reigns from 1350 to 1364, who is succeeded by his son, Charles the Wise, who is succeeded by his son, Charles the Mad. Now, here is where things get interesting. Charles the Mad really is crazy, but he has a son, um, the Dauphin, uh, who is the heir to the throne. But in 1415, Henry V of England decides he's going to try to take the, king, the throne of France again, so he invades France, and he wins big at the Battle of Agincourt. He destroys the French army at the Battle of Agincourt. And, and then they, the, the two kingdoms then negotiate, and Henry negotiates with representatives for, for crazy Charles VI, um, and they come to an agreement, the Treaty of Troyes. And um, the agreement is basically this, that Charles VI agrees that his daughter Catherine will marry Henry V of England. And, and here's the real key, Charles then declares that he is disowning Charles VII, and the rumor quickly pops up that Charles VII is illegitimate. He wasn't, he wasn't actually the, uh, the son of, of Charles VI. Um, so the Dauphin gets disowned, disinherited, and instead Charles VI names Henry V as his heir. Right? Now Henry V is a young guy, and Charles is an old guy, so it's pretty clear that Henry V is going to become the king of France now because Charles just made him his heir. The weird thing is it doesn't work out that way because... Um, Henry V manages to die in August of 1422, and then Charles dies in October. So by the time Charles dies, Henry V is no longer his heir because he's dead. It's now Henry's infant son who is the heir to the throne. And at this point, the English are still pushing, you know, Henry VI is the king of France and England. And, but Charles VII at this point says, you know what, I'm king of France, I'm the son of the previous king, and, and so the fighting goes on, but the real key here is that Charles VII has a weapon in his back pocket that the English don't have, which is Joan of Arc. And so Joan of Arc and a bunch of other things tip the scales, and Charles VII eventually would manage to kick all of the English out of France, and, and essentially the fighting stops then under the reign of Charles VII, and that's the end of the Hundred Years' War. But that's not quite the end of the conflict, because Henry VI would continue to claim he was the legal king of France, and his heir would claim that, and his heirs all the way down to George III, who was the king of England during the American Revolution. You know, hundreds of years later, 300 years later, George is still claiming to be the king of France. But George is actually the last king of England to claim to be the king of France under the claim of Edward III of England.